The trade deadline is the time for MOB teams to get bet and potentially make a run to a World Series title. It can also be used as a time to get rid of some of your star players that you know you will not be able to effort to keep. Whatever the case may be, trades are supposed to help your franchise in one way or another. Let's take a look at the absolutely craziest trades in the baseball history. Ken Krehangu was cutting his way through the 1998 season in the independent leagues, not affiliated with the Major League Baseball, when he learned the Pacific Suns of the Oxford California had traded him. 30 years old and one year away from his eventual retirement, uh, Krehangu was heading to the Texas Louisiana League to join the Greenville Blues Band. The Suns received a player to be named later, Cash, and 10 pounds of Mississippi catfish. Those people in California don't know what good fish is, Pacific General Manager Mike Bigley, who formerly worked in Greenville, said after the deal was completed. Perhaps motivated by AB in exchange for a fish, Krehenby went out in the first start after the trade and promptly threw a perfect game. When the Calgary Vipers uh, realized that their new pickup John Alton wasn't going to be able to play for them, they decided to make the best of it. Due to a family in charge, Alton wasn't able to cross the border into Canada, thus making him pretty much useless to a Calgary team. So they dealt the pitcher to the Laredo Broncos in exchange for 10 bets. The bet trade wasn't the first time Calgary came up with some creative deal making. The Vipers once tried to acquire a pitcher for 1,000 and half uh, blue seats when they would renovate in their stadium. Back in 1948, uh, well before he became the legendary voice of the Tigers, Harrell called games for the Atlanta Crackers. With their regular play-by-play -play man Alien, the Brooklyn Dodgers called Ernie Harrell. Sensing an opportunity, the Crackers owner demanded a play in return for letting Harwell out of his contract. The Dodgers ended up surrendering minor league catcher Cliff Dapper. However, Harwell lasted only one season with Brooklyn and shuffled off to Detroit, where he became a broadcasting legend. Dapper accumulated just 19 career MLB appearances and never earned another one, toiling away at the lower levels of professional baseball until retiring. Frank Wayne served as a general manager for six major league teams over 25 years, and he built up a reputation as being quick to the trigger of any trade, earning him the nickname Frantic Frank. His most unusual trade came in the mid-season in 1960, when he traded his manager Joe Gordon to Detroit in exchange for Tigers manager Jimmy Dykes. The move did not really work out as hoped, as both teams missed the playoffs and failed to improve in any discernible way. While Kerry Lichtenberg was not drafted out of college in 1994, he found his way into a major league organization thanks to his team need for some additional equipment. With just one class credit to go until he got his degree in engineering, Lichtenberg looked like he was on his way out of baseball. But Greg Olson, manager of the independent Minneapolis Lutz and a former Braves catcher, convinced him to keep pitching. Lichtenberg excelled with the Lutz and in 1996 Olsen eventually convinced the Braves organization to take a chance on the young reliever. Assistant Braves GM Dean Taylor asked Olson if there was anything he could do to compensate him. The manager asked for a purchase price of 12 dozen baseballs and two cases of bats. Not surprisingly, the Braves had no problem affording that. In 1962, Harry Chitty became the first player ever to be traded for himself. Cleveland Indians traded him to the New York Mets at the beginning of the season for a little cash and a player to be named later. By the season's end, the Mets shipped him back to the Indians. It was the last he'd ever appear in the big leagues. John McDonald suffered a similar fate. The Toronto Blue Jays traded him to the Detroit Tigers for the player to be named later. Despite a decent showing as a Tigers backup uh, shot stop, the Tigers sent McDonald back to Toronto.
Martinsburg Mountaineers lack financial resources, but had one major asset – FT Grove. When the minor league at the time, Baltimore Orioles came clamoring for growth services, Martinsburg saw an opportunity and took it. The outfield fence at the Martinsburg ballpark had been leveled by a storm, forcing them to start the 1920 season on the road. Baltimore could have growth if it paid for a new one some uh, $3,500. The Orioles quickly agreed, assuring Lefty a very strange place in a baseball history. A young right-handed pitcher known as Sayan was obtained from a minor league club, the Canton Nagis, to Cleveland in exchange for a man's suit and 300 bucks. At that time, he was actually known as Dent, a shortened version of his real first name, Denton. He would come to be known as Cy the next year, when his teammates began to call him uh, Cyclone due to his speed and movement of his pitches. Obviously, no one at the time realized that Jan would go on to establish the most unbreakable of baseball records by reading up 511 wins. After a month and 3,000 hits and a grand hitting career, Dave uh, Winfield's value would be through the roof. But in the waning years of his career, he was traded for Dino. The Twins traded the 42-year-old future Hall of Famer to the Indians at the 1994 deadline for a player to be named later. But uh, two weeks later, before Winfield could play for the Indians, a strike ended the season. Winfield uh, never played for the Indians and the player was never named. To settle the trade, Indians executives uh, decided to take their Minnesota counterparts out to dinner. The director of baseball operations for the Chattanooga Lookouts, uh, Joe Engel, was known for putting on all manner of publicity stunts. He had a duck lay an egg on the second base, and one game he had the team right into the field on elephants. And then, of course, there was a time he traded his uh, shot stop for a turkey. The independent Charlotte Hornet agreed to acquire Johnny Johnson. In return, they shipped a 25 pound uh, turkey, because in Angle's words, uh, the turkey was having a better year. He served the bird at uh, the Southern Writers Association dinner, and after discovering that the turkey was a bit tough, uh, he declared that the Charlotte had won the trade. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, uh, share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel to see more in the future. Bye!